Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan and this is We The Govern. Today, I haven't done one of these in a little while, so uh, I'm very happy to be able to sit down and actually have another interview session. And it's my great honor to be here with uh, Representative Jim Walsh from the 19th Legislative District to talk to us about the lockdown legislature and exactly what's happening in Olympia. So Jim, what's it like? Uh, if you could just tell our listeners what's it like, because I this is unique in state history uh, where you're in the legislature, but you're not in the legislature. Uh, if you could just tell our listeners what it's like under these new lockdown rules and uh, what it's like being in the middle of the uh, sausage factory in Olympia. Uh, it is a sausage factory, Glenn, you're really right. Um, it's been interesting. So we're about two weeks into the current legislative session in Olympia. Uh, they always start that uh, kind of the beginning of the second week of January. That's the traditional beginning of the, the legislative session. Uh, but this one's different, of course. As most of you have probably read or seen or heard, we are operating on a, what is informally called a Zoom session. That is, we're allowing uh, legislators to phone in from home and to participate in the legislative process uh, remotely. And in order to do this, we had to change the standard House rules of how the legislature operates in Olympia. Uh, House rules are not law, uh, they're not even really administrative code, but they're, uh, they're a, a traditional agreement that kind of evolves over time for how we function. The, uh, the Constitution and the state law allows the legislature to kind of set its own terms. And uh, traditionally, they've been pretty strict about uh, members uh, of the legislature, lawmakers, had to be present in the Capitol building in order to cast votes and, and debate. Uh, and uh, this is constitutional. The Constitution's language on the seat of government and where the Capitol needs to be in the world and where the... Uh, legislators need to be when they're making law and how open they are to the public to come and watch. That's all, that's con constitutional and in some cases statu statutory. But the real details of how it works are, are just an agreement among the legislators. So one of the first votes we take every session is to vote on House rules. Right. And uh, they're, they're normally uh, the very first day of session when everyone first swears in and it's very ceremonial. There is usually a, uh, an administrative action announced from the rostrum. That's the front, the big uh, desk where the, the speaker and the speaker's pro, pro tem uh, stand and, and operate. Uh, they'll make a, a, a ruling from the rostrum that's agreed to by acclamation to uh, approve temporary rules. And these get us through the first few days of the legislature. Uh, and then sometime uh, in the first few days, maybe the first week of the legislative session, permanent rules, which really aren't that permanent, but permanent rules for that session are uh, formally voted on. And there's often a little debate around the permanent rules and we may try to change a, a thing, a detail here or there, but, uh, but it's usually not very controversial, usually not a heated argument. Um, and those are formally voted on in a traditional way as, as you vote on a bill with a roll call and everything mm -hmm. and, and approved. Well, this year has been different, like yeah. so much has been different. We, uh, we did approve temporary rules on that ceremonial opening day. It was a little more debated than it had been in the past. Uh, unfortunately, not... Uh, not terribly well debated, and we uh, we approved along uh, what was a, a party line vote uh, the temporary rules that allow the uh, the Zoom session. Now all the legislators had to come that day and were physically present in the Capitol. Oh, on the first day of session. On the first, okay. day, of so session. first day of session, they were all present there. Uh, and uh, but then uh, there was a very strange kind of choreographed moving, uh, you had to stay in a room to the side and then you could move on to the floor to cast your vote. And then you had to move back off to the room on the side, uh, keeping uh, not just six feet apart, it was actually larger than that. Uh, but we did it uh, and we voted on those temporary rules. And now, and then everybody went home, well most did, uh, about a dozen members from each caucus 
are allowed to be on campus. So, but not so much on the floor, right? They have to be in their offices. In their offices, right? They in and theory, no LAs, right? No, 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 aids. no okay. staff. All the right. staff. Yeah. So it, remember, you know, Olympia or any capital, uh, members like me, lawmakers, will have uh, dedicated staff. So right. your legislative aide, uh, sometimes an intern or something, and then we also have shared staff, mm. which are the lawyers who help review bills to make sure they're written correctly, things like that. None of the staff, the dedicated staff or the shared staff, uh, can be there. So they're all gone. Uh, so it really is kind of a, a, a ghost, a skeleton crew. Right. Uh, about a dozen members of each caucus could be on campus. Uh, it has to do with seniority and also which committees you're involved in. Uh, and the idea is you're sort of on call. You're in your office, but if uh, you needed to come over and do something on the floor, you were available to do that if needed. Well, uh, there's no formal quorum on campus the way that you would correct. normally consider and it. this was one of the rules that we changed. Right, right. And it was when you say it was split, it was mostly the Republicans opposing these rules. Correct. And mostly Democrats who endorsed and supported them, right? Now, I, yes, that's exactly right. right. And, and But I want to emphasize, even we Republicans who voted against the rules, we understood that with COVID, mm -hmm. that we were going to need to make some accommodations. What we wanted was more of a, a true hybrid approach. Mm -hmm. We wanted, and I argued for, rules under which most of the legislators would be there on mm -hmm. campus and would even be on the floor, mm -hmm. uh, maybe half or more, so that quorum requirements, as traditionally defined, could be satisfied. Mm -hmm. And then we would allow other members, maybe a third, maybe up to near a half, to phone it in mm -hmm. if they were older or if they are in legitimate uh, high-risk categories for COVID, mm -hmm. okay, they stay home. Or they have family members who have been sick, these right. kinds of things. They could stay from home. They could phone it in. They could be on Zoom. But I wanted kind of a, a, a quorum, a critical mass of the members to be physically present at the Capitol. But they said no. As right? the Constitution right. requires. Right. The, the majority and the Speaker said no. Right. Um, so we're left with this uh, where we're doing these things by these giant Zoom. Mm -hmm. If you've been on a Zoom conference, it's just like that. <laughs> right. Except there are a hundred people on it mm -hmm. and you're all, and it does test the bandwidth, although it it's mostly working, but there's lots of comical stuff People have a terrible time unmuting themselves. Mm -hmm. So we've had a number of you know passionate speeches that no one can hear, mm -hmm. and the person's <laughs> gesticulating, but you can't hear their voice because they got themselves <laughs> muted. Um, things like this. But all in all, that's somewhat functional. Uh, I think it's unconstitutional. Right. I think it calls into question every bill we pass. Right. Because if a smart lawyer at some future point wanted to go back and challenge one of these laws made by the Zoom session, I think they could make an argument that this setup just doesn't pass constitutional muster. And how do it, they even document the votes? I mean, if you're, that's got to be another well, problem. Well, that's actually not the, the strangest part because remember, in the in the state legislature here in Olympia, we do vote. We have a push button system. You right. you press yes or no, and uh, there's a computer system that automatically tallies each vote. So it was not such a great leap to make a sort of portable version of that. Mm -hmm. Now, I've used it. It works. There may be some security issues. Mm -hmm. Are we absolutely bona fide sure right. that the member is really the member who's Who, pushing that button remotely in Yakima or Walla Walla or wherever right. they might be? Uh, there's some questions there. But, but mechanically, it works. And they do do, I don't want to be too cynical, there is a uh, multiple... Uh, source verification before you install this on your computer that you are you. Right. Uh, so they've taken these precautions. But the floor debate piece is not great, but I would say it's about 75% mm -hmm. efficient, effective to what we normally do. Mm -hmm. The real problem in this Zoom session isn't so much the floor debates and votes. It's the earlier stages in the legislative and budget making process. It's the the committee hearings. Right. The that's where the real problem is. And that's where I know a lot of our concern ahead of time was the ability of people to testify, 
the ability of people to get cut off in testimony, who was with the legislators, because they're in these home secret offices wherever Correct. they are, and uh, are, there, are they reading their, their, their stuff behind the scenes, and somebody holding up cue cards? Oh, there is no doubt that's going on. Yeah, and I mean, that, no that, yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Is, and I think that's what our listeners would like to know. I mean, there's evidence that the now all of our concerns are actually coming true right now. And, you know, the thing about the floor debate is a, a lot of... I don't know, the, the ones who need to be scripted tend not to speak very much in floor debates anyway. So mm -hmm. the floor debate world is a self-correcting, self-regulating mechanism like that. Where there is more danger is in the committee hearings mm -hmm. because there you have legislators who just aren't that sharp and, and are uh, they, they need to be more scripted and they tend to have kind of scripted questions, scripted comments. Right. And... Uh, and this has gotten, I, in my opinion, worse as mm -hmm. they're sitting in their home or their home office or wherever they may be. On a beach in Hawaii. Uh, well. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. I, I wish they were that creative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they, uh, they want to talk during the, the hearings. And you can just tell if they're asking a question or making some kind of statement about a bill, about a maybe a budget proviso item or something. You're in the kind of weeds and the nuts and bolts of mm -hmm. lawmaking. And they want to ask a question or make a point. And you can just see from the way that they are cadence is working <laughs> right, right. while they speak in the Zoom uh, conference. And you know, their eyes are darting over to work very clearly, in my opinion, They've got some notes up, you know, or on the somebody, wall. Or somebody, or somebody's holding, holding something. Right. And they're reading like this. Yeah. Um, so that has sort of gotten a little worse. Yeah. But the real problem isn't even scripted le legislators. The real problem is the public comment periods. Right. Now, the really important part of committee hearings on a, on a bill, on a budget, whatever it might be, is that this has traditionally been the place where the public gets to say something. Right. I've testified many times in hearings. I mean, I know many activists have. And, and if you watched uh, TVW, which is the state's version mm. of C-SPAN, or if you watch C-SPAN, you'll see it where they'll have the panels of people come up and talk pro mm -hmm. or con uh, about a bill. And that's, mm -hmm. to my mind, to me, that's one of the most important parts of the legislative process. Mm -hmm. It's a lot for what the people say, but it's also uh, the, the, it's important to measure how many people show up. Right. A lot of times, uh, lobbyists, you hear about lobbyists. Well, a big part of a lobbyist's job is they're paid to show up and right. testify at these things. And that's okay, and we accept that. But the real value is in the non-professional, non-lobbyists who right. show up and are just regular people who care deeply about an issue they've read about or heard about, and they show up to the committee meeting and they speak their mind. Right. I've modified bills I've run before based on public testimony from an ordinary person who right. just has some life experience that is informative, that right. tells us, well, this piece of this thing right. is a step too far. Let's reel that one back in. Or this section of the bill doesn't go far enough. Let's Right. Add extended family members, and, right, or right. whatever the details. Yeah, many legislators have told me that too, right? They listen to public testimony. They need that to. to it's a reality check. <laughs> right, right. And that's right. what it's supposed to be. Right. You know, we all think we're so smart and we have to talk <laughs> to our lawyers, but we're, we miss stuff all the time. Right. And so it's a great reality check. And, and, and that's not available in the current setup. So give me an example, like right now, I know the lockdown in the Senate hearing, that one kind of had, that one's been controversial now because there was a bill, you correct me, 1551, is that right? It's uh, 5114. 5114, there we go. I got my numbers Some people like to <laughs> check these, some don't care. But yeah. It's but nevertheless, Senate Bill 5114. And so you can go back, you can go back and look at it if you want. Uh, and they were actively setting, they were actively shutting down testimony like silencing them remotely. Hitting the mute, right. which you can do on Zoom. Right. You can hit a mute button and just shut the person off. Right. And uh, the, that, the that was Senator Hunt, wasn't he doing that uh, mainly there? But uh, yeah. it, I. That's yes. whose name kept coming up all the time. Yes. Yeah. He's um, a good friend of mine. I've, I've only gotten him in trouble with the Attorney General and the Ethics Board and other things a few times. So. I, <laughs> the, the Senator had a heavy mute finger during yeah. that, that hearing. And now, uh, this 5114, this was the Senate bill, bipartisan. Mm -hmm. uh, Prime sponsored by one Republican, one Democrat, mm -hmm. uh, uh, would have automatically sent every county in Washington to phase two of the governor's 
uh, multi-phase reopening. So it would, it would have begun reopening in earnest, in and theory, then in theory, really anyway. gotten yeah, us yeah. to a, to reopen again. Yeah, wildly popular. Right, uh, sixteen hundred people signed up to speak in, mm -hmm. in favor. Now, even in a normal times, it would be hard to allow sixteen hundred people to talk. But I've been to committee hearings where fifty, right, a hundred even right. have spoken. They may only get a couple of minutes, but they generally get a couple of minutes. Right. Uh, in this Zoom hearing for 5114 to reopen the state, 1,600 people asked to speak. Only a couple of a dozen were allowed to. And the chair, as we've said, had a very heavy finger on mute and was letting people talk for about 60 seconds. And then no warning, no wind it up there, fella. Just boom, muted. Right. They're done. Move on to the next one. And... Uh, uh, people were outraged. Right. And I was getting calls. I'm. It's the state senate. I'm in the right. state house. Right, right. But I was getting calls from people right. saying, this is outrageous, this right. is tyrannical, this is shutting down the voice of democracy. All true. It was. Right, right. And the rules, these Zoom session rules, are what allows this. And we have to do better. We have to... Uh, make it more hybrid, have more of a personal element. So, and so let me ask, so I guess, you know, just so our listeners can get a better sense, what would you recommend that a citizen out there right now, annoyed or frustrated with the situation, just kind of in closing as we're just kind of give them something to do, what would you tell our listeners, uh, what would you recommend that they do to make an impact on this and make an impact with what's the rest of the session as we're moving ahead? Well, the rule, the good news is the rules can be modified at any point during the session. Mm -hmm. They're not really written in stone. At the beginning, I, I referred to them as the permanent rules, and that is technically what they're called. But they're not really permanent. Mm -hmm. They can be modified at any point. So what we need to do is we need to pursue a true hybrid legislature. And that means, as I've described, most of the legislators there in person the Capitol opened reasonably to the public. Now, mm -hmm. there may need to be COVID pre precautions, and we're aware of that. Mm -hmm. But the ability of even a few dozen people at a time to come into a hearing room and be present would prevent that quick trigger finger of mute, mute, mute. Right. It would keep the legislators, us, a little more real, mm -hmm. a little more grounded, and a little more respectful of how people speak. And as I've said all along, the people's voice improves legislation. Mm -hmm. So we want this. So contact your legislators mm -hmm. and tell them that this Zoom session is not working. The, the floor debate stuff is one thing, but those committee hearings, which is your chance, even if you never take it, your chance, your opportunity to come in and speak to us directly needs to be restored. And. Uh, uh, you can go to the, of course, the state government's website is uh, ledge, L-E-G, dot wa, W-A, dot gov, G-O-V, and you can, uh, it's menu driven. You can go there and you can look at bills, particular mm -hmm. bills, or at particular legislators and what bills they've written and what they're doing. You can use that as your guide to find things that you care about and, uh, and, and I would just say get active. Don't be discouraged. One of the terrible things of the last election cycle is it's caused some people to feel discouraged that their their vote doesn't count, their voice doesn't count. That isn't true. Uh, we need people to be engaged in contacting legislators in Olympia. And we've seen that with a number of bills lately uh, that where you can see, especially some of the gun bills, which I think we'll talk about in a future time, but uh, where there was a massive, overwhelming thousands of people coming in in opposition. The other classic was a couple of years ago when there was a bill that would have uh, really gutted the uh, salon industry, the hairdressing right. industry. It would have forced uh, hairdressers who primarily work freelance, mm -hmm. uh, it's the tradition of their industry, to become uh, permanent employees of the salons where they worked. Mm -hmm. uh, this state senator ran it thinking she knew better and it turned out it would have been horrible for that industry. And hundreds of hairdressers showed right. up in Olympia at the Capitol right. to be there in person and say, this is a terrible bill, kill right. it. Right. And they killed it. Right. The bill died. Right. So uh, that, you know, the trouble with this Zoom session and these bad rules is that can't happen right, right. now. We need to get back to where that could happen.
So, and I think that's a really good thing for us to ask people to do more. So um, I think in closing here, just uh, I really want to thank you for uh, coming on We the Governed. And uh, again, you know, let us talk about something I think that matters. And it's important, I think, that our listeners hear what it's like on the inside a little bit, you know, your perspective from an elected official. And I think this is a good reminder to people that this is a time when you need to get involved, be engaged. You can't just uh, sit at home, just imagine that things are gonna go right as they just just let it go on autopilot. It's not the way it works in Olympia. Uh, this or is, anywhere. Or it's anywhere. Not the way it works yeah, anywhere. anywhere. And so this is the time. Engage, uh, put pressure on them, sign in for all the bills you oppose or that you support. At least get your name out there. Those numbers do matter. And uh, with that, uh, as I always say at the end of every one of my videos, the future does belong to those who show up. And it's important that you Never show up more now. true than now. <laughs> Never more true Very than now. Very true. So thank you so much, Jim, for showing up and uh, today and be, be willing to communicate with our uh, listeners about this issue. Look forward to having you on again and uh, a couple of uh, future videos as well. Sessions far from over. No, we and we haven't even gotten into taxes. Right. We haven't gotten into <laughs> guns. guns, but we will soon. Yep, yep. Uh, the, the, keep your eyes on the budgets and the taxes. There are going to be a lot of uh, hot button issues there this session. So if you think uh, I miss anything, uh, please make sure you add that in the comments below. I do read all of my comments. I try to get back to them. If you like what you see here, please feel free to share it with others. I am censored on uh, social media for daring to speak truth to power and question authority most of the time. But uh, at this point in time, I'm still on YouTube, I believe. So subscribe to the channel. Go to my website, wethegovern.com, if you want to learn more. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you next time.